Story time of how I almost got arrested for selling my mom's underwear. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. My mom is a total mill. She used to be a video vixen back in the early 2000s. She even used to model and had a huge following. By the way, yes, I am her son. She's in her late 30s now, but she's still banging. So I basically found a way to monetize her hotness. The idea came to me one day when I was looking on the internet on how to make money online. Well, I found a bunch of articles about how people sell their foot pictures for money. This totally blew my mind, and I thought, I can definitely do that with my mom's feet. So I started out by taking pictures of my mom's feet, but she wasn't having it, and she even got suspicious and asked me why I was doing that, so I basically had to stop that. Then I found an article about women selling their underwear. I knew this was what I needed to do. My mom had her fair share of underwear, so I thought she's not going to notice if a few go missing. What I'm about to say is really gross. Yes, I started stealing my mom's dirty underwear and selling them online. I sold the first pair for 50 bucks. After that, I started stealing my mom's underwear all the time. So I started stealing my mom's underwear to sell them online. So basically, I started keeping track of every single time my mom went to shower. After she was done showering, I would make sure to go and steal her underwear, her dirty underwear. Then I would take a peek into her laundry basket and grab whatever was there too. In just the first month of selling my mom's underwear, I had made 500 bucks. So I started selling even more underwear. And I started selling them for 75 bucks a pop. And this is gross, but some guys wanted my mom's underwear after she went to the gym. Totally disgusting, but those are the ones that I could really sell for more money. One day, my mom started getting really suspicious, asking me where I got the money to buy all the stuff that I was getting. And of course, she started freaking out because she noticed a lot of her underwear started going missing. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. Well, I didn't know this, but my mom had installed cameras because she was getting really nervous that she had a stalker. So I would go on about my day stealing my mom's underwear. Little did I know I was being filmed every second of the day. There's a knock on the door one day and it's the police. Part three. One day there's a knock on the door and it's the police. They told me they had a warrant to search my house. I called my mom and she came home right away. That's when she broke it to me and told me that she had installed cameras and that she caught someone in the camera stealing her underwear. I couldn't believe they hadn't figured out it was me. Then she shows me the camera recordings in front of the police. And you can totally tell it's me in the video stealing my mom's underwear and putting it in Ziploc bags. And then I would just send it off to these nasty dudes. That's when the cops told me they were gonna arrest me. My mom begged them not to and explained to them that it was probably just a phase I was going through. I basically stayed quiet the whole time because I was not about to incriminate myself. The cops leave and my mom turns to me and starts laughing. She confesses that she set up the whole thing because she knew the whole time it was me stealing her underwear. When I told her how much money I'd made, she said we should keep going with the business. So yeah, we're still in business and we're going strong. My mom's story time about how my entire family found out I had an OnlyFans. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. My family is super strict on me. My dad was so strict. I couldn't even have girlfriends growing up. Like I couldn't have kids over. I couldn't go to anyone's house. It was the worst. Daddy dears would even check my emails and my cell phone every single day. So when I turned 18, I moved the heck out of that house. So of course I needed to earn money and I found out that one of my friends had an OnlyFans and she was trying to convince me to use it so that I could sign up with her link. Part of me just wanted to really piss off my dad, so I signed up. And guess what? Within a week, I had about 60 followers charging $9 a month. You do the math. See, my dad was paying for my phone bill and everything at the time, so I wanted to become financially independent and I was able to do it. So I tell my dad I don't need his financial help anymore and he starts asking questions, but I wasn't giving him any information. Later on that night, my phone starts acting weird. Go to part two. That's when I realized that my phone had been hacked. Guess what? It was daddy dearest. This claim is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. Before I realized my dad had hacked my phone, he called me and asked me to come over. But he had a really bad attitude, so I was like, what the heck is going on? When I get to my parents' house, both my parents are sitting on the couch waiting for me. And that's when my dad tells me that he knows that I'm on OnlyFans. He tells me I'm a whore and that I'm a slut and that I've disgraced the entire family. My mom just stayed quiet the entire time, but I definitely kept my cool. Once my dad was finished insulting me, I calmly told him that I was an adult and that he had no right to intervene into my life. I asked him how he found out and then he showed me his cell phone. He somehow had access to everything in my phone. I was so disgusted. That's when my mom gets up from the couch, gives me a hug and tells me that she's proud of me. She said she didn't agree with me having OnlyFans, but that she was happy I was turning into an adult. Then the craziest thing happens. The doorbell rings and guess who it is? Part three is up. When I open the door, it's my aunt, my uncle, and my cousins. My father literally called the entire family because I had an OnlyFans. As soon as my aunt sees me, she bursts into tears. I ran away from my parents' house and went straight to my apartment. Then my cousin told me they were planning on having an intervention. Now I'm making $5,000 on OnlyFans. XOXO, OnlyFans. Story time about how my blind date hid in my closet for eight hours. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. So I'm in my late 20s and I've been looking for a boyfriend for years now. I started using dating apps, but none of that worked. Recently, my boyfriend started dating this really cool guy. He told me he had a really good friend and that he thought they should set me up. Of course, I had never met this guy before. I didn't know if he had social media. I didn't know anything about him. My sister and her boyfriend set up the whole thing. 
Oh yeah, and my sister told me that he was a doctor, he owned a boat, and loved golfing. So I got ready for the date and I showed up to the restaurant. Right away he comes over and says hi to me. He knew that I would be wearing a pink shirt. We sat down to eat and we basically stood at the restaurant for three hours just talking and having fun. We talked about a bunch of stuff and towards the end of the date he gave me a kiss and asked me out again. I said yes. We said goodbye and I went home. Then I decided to go get ice cream and I went back home. I watched some TV, went to sleep. The next morning I'm getting ready, I open my closet door and he jumps out. Part two is this guy had been hiding in my closet for eight hours watching me sleep and change. Disclaimer, this is not my story time, it was sent to me on Instagram. Ran into my living room and I asked him what he was doing. He said that he really liked me and that he just wanted to spend some time with me and he didn't know how to tell me so he decided to come over to my place when I went to the supermarket the night before. I asked him how he got in and he said he came in through a window. I looked at my window and it was wide open. Remember I said I went to the supermarket in part one? That's when he decided to come into my apartment. By the way, at this point I had just finished showering and I was in my towel. My knees started shaking and I was so scared. I asked him why he hid in my closet for eight hours. He said it wasn't a big deal and that he thought I wouldn't see him. Then he actually said that he was excited for our second date. He started walking toward me and I told him to stay away. But then he started getting really angry. So I decided to play it off and act like everything was cool just so that I could get out of my apartment safely. I stayed with him in my apartment for two hours. Then I pretended I wanted to go get breakfast together. But then he lunged at me and tried to kiss me part three. He lunges at me and tries to kiss me. I pushed him away, but then he tried again. I ran to the door, unlocked it, and ran to my neighbor's house. I could feel him right behind me the whole time. He was asking me to calm down while I was running away. Did he actually think I was going to be flattered that he was hiding in my closet for eight hours while I slept? Luckily, my neighbor opened the door right away. He let me in, but my blind date tried to pretend that we were together and that we had just gotten into a fight. My neighbor knew better because he knew my situation. He locked the door and then we called the cops. It turns out he went to the same gym I did. His sister's boyfriend goes to the same gym. So he asked my sister's boyfriend to set us up, even though they actually didn't know each other. The cops looked for him but couldn't find him. I haven't seen him since. You've got the most beautiful diamond. You've got the most beautiful diamond eyes I've ever seen in my whole life the skyline is jealous i'm looking at you how you shine okay story time about how my best friend's parents walked in on me sleeping with my best friend's brothers yes i said brothers I love how I literally look like a tomato after I put on my moisturizer. Okay, so a little background information. When I was a freshman in high school, I had met this girl named Hannah. Hannah and I both went to the same school, and her and I pretty much had all the same classes, so we started hanging out a lot after school. But every time that we would hang out, we would go over to my house instead of hers. I never really thought anything of it though. I just kind of thought maybe she was embarrassed of her family or maybe she was embarrassed of me or just maybe she had some deep dark family secret. Well, anyways, fast forward, her and I become best friends. Well, fast forward to my sophomore year. It was the first day of school and we couldn't go over my house because my parents were currently selling our house and they were showing the house to people. So we had plans to hang out that day, but I had told her we can't go over my house. I was like, well, why can't we just go to your house? And she was really weird about it. And she was like, well, my family doesn't really like you. And then I was like, but your family doesn't even really know me. I've never met your family, what the fuck? So then after that, I just went home and we didn't hang out and I was kind of mad at her. So I didn't talk to her for a few days after that. Well, the one night while I'm getting ready for bed, she calls me. And this was probably after like two days of us not talking. And she was like, I'm sorry I said all those things. Like, my family doesn't hate you. The real reason why I don't want you coming over is because all of my friends before, when I would invite them over my house, would try to get with my older brothers. So after that, I was like, okay, low-key understandable, but at the same time, don't really put that on me. Anyway, so the next day, she invited me over her house, and we went to her house after school. And at first, we were just hanging out watching a movie. When her mom came in, and she was like yelling at Hannah, saying that they don't have a pool for no reason and stuff like that, and that she needs to go outside and actually use it. So we put our bathing suits on, and we go outside to the pool. So we're in the pool and I look over and I see one of her brothers playing basketball and he was extremely hot. Well, later on that night, we were sitting down at the dinner table and I was able to get a way better look at her brother. 
Well, it turns out I already knew exactly who this kid was. Back when I was a freshman, he had added me on Snapchat. And I want to say this was a little bit before Hannah and I became friends. Anyways, him and I, we had been talking for about three months until he got a girlfriend. But during the time that him and I were talking, we exchanged pictures with each other. And yes, those kind of pictures. And eventually... I think about like two months after us talking and doing that, he would wait for me after school and we would go into his car and do things. Yes, probably the kind that you're thinking. Anyways, like I said, he had gotten a girlfriend and they were together for about six months. But throughout those six months, he had been cheating on her with me. But eventually she found out and she had made him block me on everything, which is completely understandable. Back to where we are now, this is my first time seeing him in quite a few months. Well, when I left her house that night, I saw that he had added me on Snapchat again. They always come back. And as soon as I added him back, I got this Snapchat that said that him and his girlfriend broke up last month and he forgot to add me on Snapchat. And he's sorry for blocking me. It was just a hard situation, which again, understandable. Also, we're going to call her brother Matt. So every time that we would have a sleepover at her house, I would go and I would secretly hook up with Matt. Because her parents made me sleep in the guest bedroom, they were very... They just weren't comfortable with two girls staying in one bedroom. Like, even whenever she would come over my house, they would make sure to tell my mom that Hannah needs to sleep on the couch. My mom would say, okay, of course Hannah wasn't sleeping on the couch. She would just sleep in my room with me. But yeah, you can clearly tell what type of people they are after hearing that. So like I said, I would sleep in the guest bedroom and I would just kind of sneak over to his room during the middle of the night. The worst part is, is that his bedroom was on the third floor. So I would have to go all the way up to the attic. And the stairs were so creaky that like, I could have swore I almost got caught like a hundred times. Like I'm surprised nobody woke up. Well, the one day after school, Hannah came over my house and she almost found out about what I was doing because of my mother. So my mom and I have a really open relationship. You know, we talk about everything. I'm not scared to tell her that I'm a hoe or any of the nasty things that I do. And as long as I'm open and honest with her, she doesn't care either. Anyways, we had just walked into the house and we were standing in the kitchen talking to my mom. Whenever my mom asks me, Hey, are you still hooking up with that boy? Like, really, mom? Really? You out of all people. Wow. And Hannah was like, OMG, who? And I low-key wanted to tell Hannah to mind her own business, but I know if I said that, I would have kind of outed myself. Just because of the fact that Hannah and I didn't really keep secrets. Or she didn't think that we kept secrets. So I kind of just give my mom that look. Just in case you don't know what that look is, it's like, good example but that was the look that I gave her and Hannah was still like egging me on to tell her who it was but after I gave my mom the look she was like oh I must have been thinking about your sister I was just on the phone with her and we were talking about some boy that she has a crush on blah 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 and Hannah was like I never even knew that you had a sister that's because I didn't my mom made that up. But I just told her that my sister was in college and that she really never came around because she didn't like my family. And then she was like, oh, what college does your sister go to? And I had blurted out the only college that I could even think of. I was like, oh, she goes to UCLA. And of course she goes, OMG, my older brother goes there too. I wonder if they know each other. And I was like, no, probably not. Like she's a band geek and stuff like that. I didn't even know if they had that in college at the time. And she just kind of looks at me. But after that, she let the subject go, thank God. And Anyways, but then my mom says, hey, did you take your birth control today? And Hannah just looks at me. 
Little did she know her brother was the whole reason why I was even on it. Anyways, I just told her that it was because of my acne, even though I didn't even have acne at the time. TMI. Anyway, so fast forward, I think it's like a few days before Christmas break. Hannah secretly asked my mom if I could go on vacation with her and her family over break. Now, even though this probably makes me sound like a bad person, I still didn't feel bad. She texted me the Friday that our Christmas break started and she was like, pack your stuff. My brother's going to come get you at 9 p.m. And I was like, what are you talking about? And she was like, just go talk to your mom. Whew, had to do my eyeliner off camera, but we're back and better now. So I went downstairs and I asked my mom what Hannah was talking about. And she was like, well, a little bit ago, Hannah asked me if you could go to Florida with her and her family for Christmas break. How thoughtful. I mean, how can you not feel bad for doing that to her after she tried to surprise you with a vacation for Christmas? But then again, that's just me. Back to the story. And as I went to go upstairs to go and pack my stuff, my mom stopped me and she was like, you know, Hannah's a really sweet girl and I don't really like what you're doing behind her back so I thought about it for a minute and then I turned around and I told my mom to mind your own goddamn business period like sis don't forget when you were hyping me up when I was telling you that I was screwing her brother mm -hmm. don't act like that wasn't you so fast forward, I'm packing my stuff and I get a text from a random number saying that they are outside. And at first I was like, what the hell? Because Matt had already had me on Snapchat and had my phone number and Hannah said that her brother was coming to get me. So I was a little bit confused and it just felt very sus. But the text said, I'm here, come outside. So I finished packing up my stuff and I walk outside and I'm expecting to see a blue car because her brother's car is blue. And this car was black. So I get in the car and I realize that it is her older brother who was in college. We're going to call him Jake. And Hannah's house was probably like 25 minutes away from mine. And by the way, he was way better looking than Matt. Like, forget Matt. We don't want him anymore. We want Jake. But we're sitting in the car and we start talking and he brings up how Matt had told him that we've been secretly hooking up. How lovely, right? Like, that is so awkward. I could not imagine being in that situation. No. And he was like giving me advice on how I shouldn't tell Hannah because she'll freak out when low key, I already knew not to do that. Like, duh. What do you think I am? Dumb? Probably, but no. So when we got to their house, we took an Uber to the airport and Hannah was deathly afraid of flying. So she had sat with her mom and dad and I sat with her two brothers. Matt ended up taking half a Zanny before we went. So he was pretty much asleep the whole time. And I had been sitting in the middle and Jake and I just watched movies the whole time. And we started getting a little touchy, but nothing major. Because like I said, we're team Jake now and we don't want Matt anymore. Uh, throw the whole man away period now i just want to say something real quick this would be the point where i would start to get worried because you know things can only go your way so far before karma just bites you in the ass anyway so we get off the plane and we go to this nice ass beach house now let me explain the layout of the house so here is hannah's room and then here's a bathroom and then here's her brother's room i was staying in the guest bedroom that was right across from her room because like i said her parents were complete weirdos well as soon as we got there we all went to sleep because we had gotten there really late and the next morning hannah was feeling really sick she was throwing up so her parents put her in my room because they didn't want her sharing the bathroom with her brothers and getting them sick also so they washed all the sheets in the room and then they had put me into her room which may i say we love that for me because now i was right across from her brother's room well the whole time i pretty much just hung out with her brothers because like i said her parents didn't want her getting anybody sick and hannah had family that had just moved down to florida so her parents were over at their house pretty much helping them unpack and just hanging out with them well the third night that we were there hannah's brothers and i we pretty much went to this bar slash restaurant and jake was getting matt and i 
I drinks the whole time. And then we had went to this club that was like two doors down. And I made it pretty obvious that I liked them both because I don't remember much that happened at the club, but I do remember I made out with both of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. I'm not even gonna lie. I did. And what are you gonna do? nothing well then hannah's parents came and picked us all up and i was trying super hard not to throw it because they had this really nice rental car that they got and i did not want to piss her parents off so it was around 12 a.m whenever we got back to the house i went straight to the bathroom threw up a few times and felt way better well hannah's parents made a fire on the deck so alex matt and i were all sitting outside with his parents and at around 1 a.m they all went inside well we all started to play truth or dare and one thing led to another and Eventually, I agreed to have a you-know-what with both of them. So we all went upstairs, and at about 3 a.m., everybody was asleep. So I had snuck over to the boys' room, and we started doing the deed. Well, probably about 10 minutes later, their parents woke up, and I heard footsteps going up the stairs, so I ran to the bathroom. And her mom came into my room and asked if I was okay, and I was like, yeah, I think I may have what Hannah has. I'm not sure. So she went, she got some medicine, put it on my nightstand, and went back downstairs, and went back to sleep. Or I thought she had went back to sleep. So since my room was connected with the boys we had a deck that was outside on the back of the house facing towards the beach and it was right above the lower deck we had thought that was the best place because hannah's room was on the second floor and hers was towards the front of the house and her parents room was on the first floor and it was also towards the front of the house so i snapchat matt and i'm like hey let's just go on the deck so we went onto the deck continued what we were doing and a few minutes later i thought i had saw somebody walk back into the house well i just brushed it off because i thought i was just being super paranoid well a few seconds later we heard the sliding door open behind us so we all turn around and all you hear is everybody gasping for air like you would have thought they died so that night hannah's parents called my parents and they wanted to send me home on the next available flight but my mom and her parents got into an argument because my mom didn't want me flying alone well then hannah's mom she kind of threw a little bit of shade at me understandable again she was like if your daughter can do what i caught her doing then she can take a flight home by herself okay sis i see you out here well then jake offered to fly home with me whenever we got off the plane we got an uber he took the uber with me back to my house back to the airport and then took the next available flight back down to florida when i got home my mom didn't ground me because sis already knew that i was a hoe i mean she did say that she told me not to do that so she was kind of right but at the same time como se dice i don't give a fuck but as for Hannah and I, she called me the next day and she was like, OMG, that was so funny. I can't believe we all walked out on you guys. I apologized even though I wasn't really sorry, but she actually surprised me. She was like, it's fine. Like if I was in your position and you had two older hot ass brothers, I'd probably do the same thing. So yes, I still hang out with her. We're still best friends to this day. Um, We all just laugh about it now, except for her mom. Her mom hates me. She does. She, she just despises me but matt is back with his ex-girlfriend and he's still cheating on her with me again i don't feel bad i'm just gonna jump in here real quick you know i don't judge anybody who sends their story time into me but all i'm saying is karma is a bitch anyways back to the story jake went back to college him and i still talk whenever he comes home we still hook up but yeah other than that the outcome of the situation was not that bad mother-in-law and i used to have a bad relationship i'd say it's neutral now we don't really see her much but we don't fight anymore around the time we got married mother-in-law lost her damn mind first she began behaving very erratically not sleeping or eating then she realized our wedding was a month after her 40th birthday and decided she would outdo our wedding. It became a really toxic competition. I was young and got hurt pretty easily, and it put a damper on my wedding planning because everything I got, she got something better. Her birthday dress was so much prettier than mine, and at the time, I was a broke 21-year-old, and it was devastating. On the day of her party, I checked on her and found her cutting her dress up. I asked what the heck she was doing, and she just said she didn't want to wear it anymore. I was in shock, but not my dress, so not my problem. She met some guy a few years later and moved. So we don't really talk anymore and visit maybe every other year for like three days. Well, on our last visit, I found out that she told her sister at the time that I had cut up the dress and that's why her sister hates me. I found this out because her sister was joking about how she wanted my house to burn down and how she wanted to make me suffer for the dress. 
I told her sister that was a lie and mother-in-law did that herself. The sister confronted mother-in-law who cried and said she couldn't remember who cut it. Finally, she admitted she cut it and lied because she couldn't explain why she did it. To be honest, I think she did it because she was mad she couldn't be the bride. She was super weird with her own wedding dress. Anyway, her sister shrugged it off and I said it was embarrassing and asked her for an apology. Her husband snapped at me and said, why would I embarrass her and I have no empathy? Her sister said I needed to let it go because obviously she was embarrassed. I did, but I don't think I was an idiot for asking. Not the idiot. When getting caught in a lie, the least the offender should apologize. Instead, her family is enabling her to continue this awful behavior. Sorry you're going through this. It can't be easy on you. Sister is joking about burning your house down over the dress incident, but as soon as it's revealed mother-in-law was lying and did it herself, they still hate you and say you're just trying to embarrass her. What in the actual heck? No. Throw the trash out of your life and go no contact. What does her husband have to say about all of this? If he's not doing anything to stop this behavior, he's enabling it and it's time for a serious talk. Does mother-in-law maybe have an undiagnosed mental issue? No excuse for her behavior either way. Sorry you've got this to deal with. These people are wild. Embarrassed is how you're supposed to feel when you get caught doing something wrong. It doesn't excuse your actions or from being held accountable. But I would let go of the apology and just keep your distance if possible. A lie like this is like a mouse. It's not just one. Hubby can attend family functions, but I would always be busy. I, female 26, have been married to my husband 31 for three years and we're expecting a baby boy together. When I married my husband, I kept my maiden name, which he was perfectly okay with. We already discussed and agreed that any future kids we would have automatically take his last name. His family considered this a huge deal and I decided to just go with it. But recently, I started thinking about it a lot more and figured that it would be unfair for my unborn son to take my husband's family name and not mine. I talked to my family and they said my husband and in-laws are ridiculous to push this on me without a compromise expecting I go with it. So I went home and told my husband that I've changed my mind about the last name thing and want to either have both our last names combined or my last name to be given to our son. He was confused, saying we had an agreement, and then asked what the cause of this sudden change of mind was. I told him, and he said I couldn't just do that, and called me selfish when I pointed out that I'm the mother I get a say too. We went back and forth on this, and he said no way he and his family would let me do this to his son as if my last name was a disgrace. We had a fight, and we stopped talking after this. He said that I broke and violated my part of the deal, and I should just deal with it now, but I won't accept it. Am I the idiot? What's with all the people talking to their biological family about their marital issues and not first conversing with their spouse? You are the idiot, OP. I'm pregnant and found myself in a similar situation with my husband. I didn't talk to my parents about it because they're not in my relationship. I sat down with my husband and had a great conversation about what we'd agreed on, how I was feeling and how we could compromise. You can't communicate effectively until you remove your parents from your relationship they will never give you an unbiased opinion. You literally mention that you've had this promise at least since you were married and have both discussed and agreed. He's right to be upset knowing you've already decided. It's a big deal to his family, which you are aware of. In my opinion, you are the idiot. Not for wanting to include your last name, but for promising your husband his last name for the kids and then going back on that and starting a huge fight over something you guys have already agreed upon a while ago. It must be out of nowhere for him. Yes, you are the wife and future mom, but that doesn't mean you can just switch sides and go back on your word whenever you feel like it. But people are allowed to change their minds. That's the thing. We all continue to evolve. OP offered the compromise that is a hyphenated last name. Seems fair. How can she be the idiot for that? He's perfectly within his rights to be upset that she's done so in the way she has. But beyond that, I'm not sure why his family and he think they have a claim over babies they won't even birth. They should just use both their surnames and end this conflict already. That's a perfect compromise, in my opinion.
So I, 32 male, have been married to my wife, Ali, 33, for five years. Her dad was a restaurant business owner and her mom stayed at home. Both of Ali's sisters got married to very successful guys and had kids. At the beginning of our relationship, I started my own construction business. I wasn't making a ton of money and Ali's parents hated it. Her sisters always tried to set Ali up with their husband's friends. Her father disapproved of our wedding and forced Ali to ask for a prenup if she wanted help with the wedding. Ali also requested for us to have separate finances. We've had a loving marriage so far, even with the rocky start, but whenever she visits her family, I tend not to go. So Ali's dad made some bad investments, got screwed by his partner, and his business took big losses. Due to this, he and his wife struggled to retire as they hoped. So Ali's sisters came up with a surprise for their parents on their 40th wedding anniversary. They'd pay off their house and send them on vacation to celebrate retirement. The whole thing would cost about 30000 each sister would be responsible for 10000 Ali's always paid for things regarding her family and I pay for mine. However, she gets along with my parents and will buy things for them sometimes. So, Ali is a school teacher and when she found out the plan, she asked me for 8000 I laughed. I said her parents were awful to me. They thought I was a broke loser and you asked for a prenup. Our finances were separate because she asked for it and I don't plan to change it. Ali said she didn't have the money right now but would pay me back, which I know is nonsense and isn't something I consider anyway as I intend to not help her family out in any way. Ali and her sisters got on a Zoom call to talk about it. I was called into the meeting and asked by the sisters to have some empathy. I told them I had decided and then I was criticized. Her sisters went off how I'm holding a grudge still, how I should be willing to help my wife and how it's just money. I said how neither of them has worked a day in their life. One is a stay-at-home mom and one divorced their doctor husband and gets alimony. How neither of them gave me a chance six years ago. How neither of them is using their money either, just using their husbands like they always do. That Ali asked for a prenup because their dad thought I was a loser and how he needs my help. That Ali should manage her money better. I told them both never to ask me for a favor again. After we got off the call, Ali said she felt like I was being unfair and petty, that I've helped my parents out before. Which is true, I bought my dad a new 30,000 truck about a year ago. I said that's because my silly business took off and I can afford to do those things, and that her parents are her responsibility and I don't owe them a thing. While I'm not in the wrong, my parents think laughing at my wife's request was kind of an idiot move. Am I the idiot? Edit. Yes, her parents tried apologizing, but I have a feeling this is only because my business took off. They try to invite me to come to holidays and stuff, but I don't respond. Not the idiot. They messed around and found out. The laughing seems natural given the circumstances, but if it was for something that was a need, it may be different. A vacation and mortgage paid so that they can retire early? Nah. Have your wife get a loan from her sisters to cover her part of the grand gesture and she can pay them back. Problem solved. And let's be real here. Opie's wife is a school teacher. The prenup was never about protecting Opie's wife's assets. It was about preventing Opie from accessing the parents' assets. This entire financial debacle has been about Opie's wife's parents and sisters fear over what Opie would do with access to their fabulous riches, which no longer exist. Now that they no longer have those fabulous riches, but Opie does, they seem remarkably friendly and keep on talking about letting bygones be bygones. Not the idiot, agree 100%. A prenup to me is a red flag too far. Something doesn't sit right with me when I hear prenup. She decided to listen to her parents and require this of you. Now she must face the reality of this move. It's really, really sad that you're in this position. Maybe a little bit idiot in you to rub her nose in it, but ultimately it was her decision, and that decision has come and bitten her butt. Not your fault. She asked for separate finances. She got them. My 35 male mom remarried her current husband 14 years ago. He's an okay man, but my dad will always and forever be my number one. When they announced that a baby was on the way, I freaked out. I told them there and then that I didn't want to ever be involved in this kid's life. I find it super weird that he's 22 years my junior. I'm old enough to be his damn dad. Why did my mom even need to have another child at 42? That baby fever was intense, apparently. I found the entire thing disgusting, to say the least. The years went by, and when my half-brother was around 10 years old, he started saying how much he wanted to meet me. After a lot of nagging from my mother, I said, whatever, screw it, all right, I'm going to do it. From our first encounter, he basically clung to me. He's constantly tried to make me like and accept him for the past three years, but I just can't do it. He's a nice person and all, but I still find my mom's actions nasty, so I involuntarily associate him with that. I can't help it. I never wanted a sibling. 
Yesterday, he was over at my place and kept on asking me to watch a movie with him, which I didn't want to do. I ended up going off on him and told him that I didn't want to be his friend and actually wanted nothing to do with him at all. He immediately started crying and apologizing to me, saying that he doesn't have any friends and gets bullied at school for his introverted nature. He just doesn't understand why I despise him so much. He said that he's so tired of feeling rejected all the time when all he does is be good to everyone. He said sorry one more time, told me that despite my huge hatred toward him, he still loves, admires and respects me a lot. Then he ran out of the house. He hasn't reached out to me ever since. How can I be the idiot? You are the idiot. He hasn't reached out to you since. Gee, I wonder if that has something to do with you. A grown freaking man oozing hatred for a kid. Your own brother, no less, who's done nothing wrong. This wah wah i don't want a little sibling crap gets old by middle school you're an adult your behavior is the disgusting one here and a little misogynistic frankly given the baby fever comment grow up op you are the idiot you're an adult he's a child he doesn't deserve to be treated like garbage because of how you feel about your parents divorce i can't even imagine how he must have felt this whole time trying to be good enough for his older brother why even stay in contact with your mother if you were going to torture her child emotionally? Please strongly consider therapy. Are you sure you're 35? You clearly haven't grown up. Your mom remarried 14 years ago and you still haven't come to terms with it? God forbid you decide to have a kid later in your life because you're so harsh in judging your mom. 42 is not the end of life, buddy. The only good thing you've done in all of this is prevent your BS from contaminating your half-brother. He clearly looks up to you, but what is he really looking up to? A baby man who still can't get over the fact that your parents are not together anymore. My girlfriend and I have been dating for three years. I'm a straight man and she's a bi woman. I hadn't yet met her family. It was something important to me to do. She's met my family several times and it was important to me to meet her family. I felt like she kept putting it off, saying they were too far away, too expensive, etc. Finally, this year she and I planned a holiday visit. We booked an Airbnb in their area because she said the house was too small to host us, in addition to all their other holiday guests, and we were going to come over for Christmas dinner. So, a week before Christmas, my girlfriend cancelled the Airbnb and only then did she tell me that she'd argued with her family days before. She and her dad had a Zoom call and apparently her dad said that her haircut looked gay and could she style it more conservatively for the holidays with the extended family. Her hair is shaved on both sides, but if she parts it in the middle, the shaved sides are concealed. She decided on her own to call off Christmas for that reason because she's bi and felt very offended her dad had been awful and also her mom sat there not saying anything. I asked what she was going to do next and she said she was going to have a talk with him and her mom but she was sure they'd work it out. I asked why she didn't speak to me before cancelling the Airbnb and she said that we obviously weren't coming around. I feel kind of hurt because while her dad said something crappy, I felt like it was too severe to decide not to go immediately on her own especially when she knew I wanted to meet her family and it was important to me. It would be different if she didn't want to work it out and wanted to distance herself permanently. Like then, I wouldn't feel like she's keeping her family in her life, but I've never met them. But when she's back to FaceTiming them all the time, she said that it was a privilege for her parents to be able to meet her partner and that they would have to earn that by treating her with respect before they got to be a part of that, which I feel like was missing the point of why I'm upset. She's talking about them wanting to meet me, but I'm upset because I wanted to meet them. I told her that it feels like she doesn't see our relationship as serious, and she said that I was totally missing the point. This wasn't about me. And then she got really upset with me, saying that I seemed too okay with their insults 
and she didn't like how I was acting like it was even an option to go to family Christmas after what her dad had asked of her. Am I the idiot for being disappointed in not meeting my girlfriend's family? You are the idiot. Your girlfriend is struggling with the conflicting feelings of not being respected by her family but wanting to be a part of her family. Instead of supporting her, you're only thinking of yourself. It feels like your meeting her family is more important to you than her having to deal with her family dilemma. And it seems to me that you might think her queerness stops existing because she's dating you. Because she's currently presenting straight, her parents' insults shouldn't affect her. That's something you're going to need to unpack rather than trying to throw Airbnb smoke bombs at her. No idiots here. Ideally, she would have discussed cancelling future plans with you and it's okay to be miffed about that. But at the same time, your girlfriend has put in place boundaries about what she will tolerate from her family and you need to respect that. Her dad saying that about her hair may not seem like a big deal to you, but with all due respect, I think you're underestimating the impact of such insults on LGBT people. It's not a little thing for her. You are the idiot. She has a toxic family with low contact, and that's that. Why don't you ask her to talk to you about her family? Have some open communication about the life she's gone through. Meet them on FaceTime. Why do you need to meet them in person so badly? Are you going to snoop through their underwear drawers or something? And don't say you're planning to ask a dad for his approval for marriage. That won't go over well. If he doesn't love his daughter as she is, he hasn't learned an opinion on if he approves of marriage. Not that this antiquated practice should still exist.